If you're like me, one of the things that you want with you anytime you go into the woods is a fixed blade knife. And right or wrong, good or bad, even though the Boy Scouts of America do not officially prohibit fixed blade knives in spite of what some people may tell you, many local councils and camps do. But you really need a good sturdy, strong knife. I think that it's really important to have a super strong knife uh, just in case. And so the, um, there's been a quest to, to come out with a folding bushcraft knife but for several people. And, you know, the weakness is always going to be in the action and the lock. So the folks at Battle Horse Knives actually took a look at this and came up with a pretty unique uh, twist on how to achieve that concept. And, and they came up with what they're calling the, the tree frog. And it's right here. And it's got, a, it's got a really unique locking system. And one of the reasons this was designed was with the Boy Scouts in mind. Since I'm a Scoutmaster, I thought we'd take a look at it. So that's what we're going to do coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me. And the mosquitoes, they are out in force today. It's been raining all morning. I guess this stirred them up. So, But the folks at Battle Horse Knives were kind enough to hook me up with one of their tree frog knives at Blade Show. And I took this thing to Boy Scout Camp, and I've used it a little bit. And I'm not fastidious on my knife maintenance, so it didn't have that little bit of discoloration there on the on the grind when I got it. But I've been using it a little bit, so and I, I got to tell you, I really like it. And we've looked at some battle horse knives before, and, and you know I like them. They've got some really good knives. But as I said, there's, it seems like a, a, a quest for a really good, usable, folding bushcraft knife. So you can have it with you places. Some places, just it's legally against the law to have a fixed blade knife legally against the law is that kind of repetitively redundant <laughs> so uh anyway there's 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 sometimes you just can't have a, a fixed blade knife um, boy scout camps all over america do not allow fixed blade knives for whatever reason um but the weak point as i said has always been is obviously is is the hinge here right because you got to have if, if it's going to fold it's got to pivot so you got to pivot in here and then you have to somehow lock it open because you don't want it closing up on your fingers so you can see this lanyard here the folks at battle horse came up with what i think is a very unique super solid extremely robust locking system and they do that by the means of these two pins and basically you got a pin here and a pin here and then you got these through holes here and you can the blade itself you can barely see it right up there there's holes go through right through the blade I'll show you the pins too the pins are really nice these are like stainless steel pins They've got little detents in them and just uh they go right in the hole here like that the other one goes up here like that and very securely keep, keep it closed um got a lanyard here you can pull that down to kind of kind of lock it in place so to speak and hang it from the lanyard on your hang it from a carabiner or whatever on your pack or hang it in your pocket or just put it in your pocket and let me tell you a little bit about the specs so this is 01 tool steel features about a three and a half inch cutting surface about a four and three quarter inch blade it's like three thirty seconds of an inch thick got a very sharp spine um, my car to handles open structure on the back so you can clean it out keep it clean for whatever you're using it for it's kind of a kept heart style knife which i really like i think that's a very very useful knife design a knife style knife shape spear point kind of blade kept heart style handle with a little finger notch there a little bit of a guard for your finger here uh, I'll tell you it's very very comfortable it just feels really good and you don't have to use the locks but you can i would say use the locks so let me just give you the rundown on how i use this thing so you can put the, lead, the pins in from either side. Since I'm right-handed, I, I, I want to get this out of my way uh, and have it come around behind my back. So behind the back of my hand, rather. Not behind my back. That would be awkward. So just you put the pins through the holes. They go right in. They've got the little detent that keeps them in place. And then that, that puts the uh, lanyard kind of behind your hand. It's out of the way. I can choke it up if I need to. And, and I kind of like it because it lets me just be able to, to, to not have to hold on to it so tightly. But it's not in the way gives you plenty of um plenty of comfort and man i'm telling you i'm just squeezing this thing doing the chris tanner test and i don't see any hot spots just a really nice design on the knife so instead of me rambling about the knife you, you've seen it that's 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 the details and the specs let's take you down to the old stump top and get to doing some knife stuff mosquitoes leave me alone 
they could have been up there and I missed them. Uh, anyway, let's do some nice stuff. Okay, so here have here we have it. Um, and this is not a fixed blade knife, so it's definitely not designed to baton. Um, but they told me that Dave Canterbury has beat the heck out of this these things, so you know why not, right? We're gonna give it a shot. So let me bet. Let me just. Uh, it does have nice little pins in here and I think as long as you're hitting on, on the handle on if as long as you're hitting on the blade it shouldn't be that that bad that hard on it should it let's just see we're gonna do it anyway nice and solid so Baton that out. Let's baton a little bit more. It's been raining all day. I'm trying to get down to some to some dry wood in the middle of this piece here. I'm not sure what kind of wood this is, but we'll just we'll call it this kind of wood. So now let's turn you down again. So not bad there. What about some good old feathers? Because you know I like to do some feathers, right? Uh, this thing's got a scandy grind, by the way. It is really nice. This wood, however, is not. Not really that nice of wood to feather. It's kind of crumbly. Matter of fact, I'm just going to use this to try out some some harder, heavier carving to see if check for hot spots because it's not it's not feathering very well. I think it's probably oak, but so it's doing a pretty good job of uh, no of having no hot spots, none whatsoever, and I'm giving it a good bit of pressure. So there's that. So let's uh. Let me see if I can baton out, split out a little bit of this cedar because I like making cedar feathers and I'm just going to put this out of camera for a minute and you can see it come, when it comes back down. There's that. All right. Try to get into the to the, to the dry part. So this, is, this has been exposed. This is not. So let's see if I can get into here and get into some dryness. Some dryness, as they say. Although I'm not sure that they say that. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get go this way. By the way, I'm pretty sure that Battle Horse Knives does not recommend batoning with this this knife, but it seems to be doing okay. So let's just see about some feathers here now. Yeah, it's a little better there. I like making cedar feathers anyway. It's just, especially the red part on the inside, it gets really hard and it's smooth. So we're gonna cut that off. So that might be some big ones. Let's try some little ones. This thing has, again, a really sharp spine on it. Let's just see how well it'll fuzz out some, it'll make a look at that with you. I mean, a lot of people think the main purpose for a sharp spine is just to strike a ferro rod, but man, oh man, you can do stuff like that with it. That's pretty, pretty tasty right there. You just carve that off. Now, speaking of ferro rods, I happen to have a Poly Striker XL here. And we're going to use the knife to do so to see if we can uh, get us a fire going here. And look at there, will you? That, boys and girls, is one of the reasons for batoning, in my opinion. And that cedar smells so good when it's burning, too. Alrighty, look at there. 
Oh yeah. Even to get rid of some of these skeeters. I like the nice fun fungi I've got growing on top of the old stump top here. Hmm. Okay, that was a quick look at the tree frog folding bushcraft knife from the folks at Battle Horse Knives. And I gotta say, I really, really like this knife. I think that this is probably the most solid take on a folding bushcraft knife that's possible. Um, anytime you have a hinge to make a folding knife, that's going to be a weak point there. And so your lock is going to be extremely important. I don't know of a, I can't think of a way to make a stronger lock than to have pins that actually go through the blade itself and lock it into the handle. There's some really good locks on the market, but I don't think there's anything stronger than a solid piece of stainless steel going through it. So two pieces of stainless steel going through it. So I think they did a really good job of creating a super strong folding knife. Now I'm not going to check the balance on this on the balance and orientation and rotation device because it is a folder and I just don't do that. I probably should not have even baton with it. I wouldn't recommend that nor would they but I, I just kind of wanted to, wanted to um, give it a little extra because there's always um, a, a lot of potential criticism for a folding bushcraft knife because most of us would prefer a fixed blade but there's just places and times and situations where a folder is is, is the best choice for, for the situation or maybe the only choice you have and so it's good to know that there's a really super solid folding knife available that that meets the criteria of a folding knife if you're not allowed to have a fixed blade for whatever reason because of legal purposes or because you're at a boy scout camp which still makes no sense to me but that's 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 the rules in most council camps even though it's not the official boy scout rule i think this is a really really good one it's high quality materials from a high quality knife maker battle horse knives um, the price on this knife is about 180 bucks so it's comparable with one of their fixed blade knives which i think is a feat in itself because let's face it it costs more to make a folder uh, to do a fixed blade full tang knife all you got to have is basically you got you got your piece of steel with two handles on the outside of it um, for a folder you got more labor and more parts and pieces you have to have a pivot and a lock at a minimum so i think they did a good job of keeping the price reasonable on this for what you get um, it's not a cheap budget knife but it is a very very high quality knife that will last you for years and years and years i believe and it just it, it works great the design is great i like the kephart style knives um, especially for bushcraft and i think this is a very versatile design very versatile knife super solid and i really appreciate the folks at battle box hooking me up with this so i can show it to you and i took it to boy scout camp by the way because um i think it's a great idea to have and I didn't want to break any rules and carry a fixed blade knife. I would never do that. So anyway, um, <laughs> once again, thanks to the folks at BattleBox, and thank you for watching Survival on Purpose. If you're looking for a really super solid folding bushcraft knife, uh, I think this is an excellent, excellent choice. So I hope this has been helpful. As always, thank you for watching Survival on Purpose. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for clicking that thumbs up, for sharing this video with all your friends. Thank you for doing all your online shopping through the Survival on Purpose links. I really appreciate your support. Oh, by the way, you can check out another video right there. I really appreciate that too. So once again, my name is Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident. So be prepared. I'll see you next time.